Trinity and Lucifer, D.G. Wonder First Series, written by D.G. Lampalis. Mundus Novice. Chapter 10. Monolith. During a destructive flood, Lucifer used Philosopher's Stone to block a crack in the sky with a large boulder. However, the boulder was shattered by the Trinity, scattering the pieces across the earth. After thousands of years, one of the large stone fragments fell onto ancient eastern soil. In the ninth year of the new kingdom of the Yuan family, this cursed demon stone began to change. A crack emerged from within, and a demon monkey quickly broke out of the crack. The mischievous demon monkey caused destruction everywhere from birth, influenced by Lucifer's rage and abilities, and nurtured by the spiritual energy of nature for thousands of years. Its strength was astonishing, and it was unmatched by ordinary demons and monsters. Under normal circumstances, Lucifer did not have the ability to create life. However, due to the coincidence of Lucifer's curse and the magical power of the boulder being shattered by the dam, the stone possessed the energy of both Lucifer and Trinity along with the nourishment of nature, leading to the birth of this demon monkey. The monkey claimed to be the great sage equal to heaven, standing as tall as the heavens. Its arrogance and madness were no less than that of Lucifer. When it could no longer find any creatures to challenge on the ground, it chose to directly challenge the heavens. After obtaining the somersault cloud and the golden cudgel, two sacred weapons that could allow it to travel through the skies and extend and retract, respectively, it boldly charged into heaven to prove itself as the strongest in the universe. Heaven is a high-dimensional place where there is no time or space limitation. Only the eternal spirits can enter, and they must have the soul's eye, the infinite eye, to see and reach heaven. Except for the gospel angel, fallen angel, or deceased humans created by Trinity, no other creature had ever entered or survived in heaven. The heaven only allows the eternal spirits to enter, and they must have the infinite eye to reach it. The gospel angel and the fallen angel were born with the eternal spirit and the infinite eye when created by the Trinity, and they both exist as spiritual beings. When humans are on earth, the infinite eye is sealed in the pineal gland of the brain, and the eternal spirit is locked in the body until death, when they return to heaven and the eternal spirit and infinite eye are released. However, the demon monkey was different. It was neither Satan, the gospel angel, nor the fallen angel, nor was it an elderly human. But it possessed the eternal spirit and the infinite eye, even though it could not fully control them at the moment, as this power was latent. When the demon monkey obtained the somersault cloud and the golden cudgel, it immediately flew into the sky, reaching the edge of the earth through the clouds. However, as it approached the atmosphere, the air became thinner, and the atmospheric pressure made it difficult to breathe. It had to fly back to a lower place, still restricted by the limitations of its physical body. At this point, it could not find the path to enter heaven through its eyes or body. It shouted loudly in the sky, and its somersault cloud flew for thousands of miles. It flew rapidly on the cloud layer and shouted loudly, challenging the strongest god in heaven, and continuously beat the cloud layer with the golden cudgel, causing earthquakes and floods in many places on the ground. But this big move alarmed Lucifer, and the demon monkey quickly flew around the earth. Wherever it passed, it caused great natural reactions. Lucifer was surprised by who had this power and who dared to challenge the gods of heaven. She was very interested in exploring further. Lucifer, with Satan's army, waited for the demon monkey in the sky, and they finally met at the edge of heaven. Who are you? Are you a warrior from heaven? I am the Great Sage equal to heaven, and you can call me Lord Great Sage. I came here today to challenge you. You were making me search for you for a long time. That's great. You guys are all here, and I'll wipe you out in one go. Haha. Ha. Great Sage Lord? That's quite a bold statement. Although I don't know who you are, I am not your enemy. On the contrary, we have a common enemy. 
Like you, I also came to challenge the heavenly soldiers. Especially that pompous and cruel creator of the Trinity. I can guide you and take you into heaven. Who is Trinity? Who are you? Are you with them? But you don't seem like a good person. If you dare to deceive me, I will definitely not spare you. But first, I warn you that I don't know what grudges you have with them, but when you arrive in heaven, they are all my prey, and you cannot fight against them. Ha <laughs> ha. Trinity is the god who governs heaven and the universe. If you have the ability to defeat him, then the entire universe will be yours. But you only have one. How can you fight against thousands of heavenly soldiers and generals? Ha ha ha. Who am I? I am the great and famous great sage equal to heaven. Even if there are millions or tens of millions of heavenly soldiers and generals, they are like ants to me. My 72 transformations can easily conjure up thousands of monkey armies. These mere heavenly soldiers and generals are not worth mentioning. Although Lucifer doesn't think highly of this demon monkey, just a mere fairy, how can it have such a big mouth? But she feels a different kind of power from this monkey, a very familiar feeling, and the energy is not weak at all. However, Lucifer senses that this demon monkey has not yet fully grasped this potential, but with time and understanding, it will surely be a very strong warrior. Mr. Monkey King, I am very pleased to hear your words. Let's watch the show next to us. If you need anything, remember to call us for help. The Monkey King is talented and intelligent, and has been nurtured by Trinity, Lucifer, and tens of thousands of years of spiritual energy. With just a light touch from Lucifer, she easily opened the eternal eye within her soul. At this moment, Lucifer felt even more strange, as a demon beast belonging to the mortal world could not possibly possess the eternal eye. And she could feel that the potential of this demon monkey could surpass her at any time. She knew that the monkey in front of her was not as simple as a demon, and at this moment, she felt a subtle connection with the monkey. After the monkey king opened the eternal eye, its soul left its body and entered heaven with Lucifer and her army of Satan. Chapter 11 Wandering Monk The great sage equal to heaven rode on his cloud and successfully entered heaven with Satan's army. Satan then directed the great sage to attack the temple in Trinity Embankment. To prevent Satan's army from approaching the temple, the Gospel Archangel led a large army of angels to fight outside the palace gates. The great sage once again reminded Satan and his army not to interfere, and then without saying another word, he pulled out several hairs from his own body, blew them, and thousands of great sages emerged from the hairs. The two armies confronted each other, marking the first battle between gods and demons in history. In the past, these two groups of vastly disparate and completely different levels of power had no chance to interact, let alone fight. It was this unique encounter that gave birth to the stubborn monkey, which gathered the energy of the three realms of heaven, earth, and human. More than 500 years ago, a prince born in the ancient region between India and Nepal at the age of 29, decided to renounce his throne and leave his homeland in search of the answers to life and death. When he passed away at the age of 80, he attained enlightenment and became the Buddha, also known as Shakyamuni. He became a very important messenger between the earthly and heavenly realms. Buddha, it seems that the fate from over 13,000 years ago is coming to fruition today. And it's even being delivered to the throne in the heavenly palace. In the multiverse, I saw the merging of my and Lucifer's energies. Nature has destined to deliver this great gift to humanity. In the world before the great flood, I created all things, while Lucifer continued to destroy. On the day of the great flood, I became the destroyer, and Lucifer became the savior. In a hair's breadth of probability, we both injected our energies into the rock at the same time. Nature played an even bigger joke on us, if the boulder hadn't fallen into the spiritually charged mountain range, our energies incubated in the Earth's aura for thousands of years. This rock would never have had the chance to give birth to life. Everything seems coincidental and unbelievable, but this result was destined to happen. 
Trinity, you are a powerful God in the universe, and you have seen the value behind this event. Since it is a gift from the universe, let me, the Tathagata, personally relieve Trinity's worries. Beings understand causality, believing that there must be a cause for every effect, and that causality exists in a linear flow. But this is not the case. Causality comes from the same root and exists simultaneously. From the perspective of humans, causality may be mistakenly perceived as having a temporal sequence. However, under the power of the universe, causality always occurs at the same moment, without past or future. Buddha, would you be willing to go on this trip for me? The mischievous monkey has two energies within it, mine and Lucifer's. It is not yet mature enough to balance the yin and yang of these two energies. The two conflicting energies within it are constantly in conflict, and the struggle between good and evil in its heart never stops for a second. If it can cultivate good results, it will surely become a Buddha and save sentient beings. If not, it will surely become a demon, causing suffering to all living beings. At this time, outside the main hall, the battle was raging, with the angel army and the monkey army evenly matched in strength. The monkey army's numbers all came from the great sage's hair, he could pluck a hair and turn it into thousands of monkeys. So as long as there were monkeys being destroyed, the great sage could easily increase his army by thousands with just a simple pluck of his hair. With this kind of quantity, it would not be easy for the angel army to deal with the monkey army in a short period of time. Great Sage, are you the one who claims to be the Monkey King that is as tall as the heavens and the mischievous monkey who calls himself the Handsome Monkey King? Who are you? I hear you talking big. Just come out and let me practice my fists. These soldiers are no challenge at all. Being able to fight against the Great Sage equaling heaven is probably the blessing you've accumulated over several lifetimes. But it seems that I am not destined to receive this blessing. Just as the Buddha finished speaking, he took advantage of the Monkey King's carelessness and pressed a giant hand down on his head. This palm was incredibly powerful and the Monkey King was completely unable to defend himself. With one blow, it shattered the multidimensional heavenly kingdom and sent the stubborn monkey back to earth, pressing him under an enormously huge five-finger mountain. Stubborn monkey, I just left you with a word. Being able to have my hand pressed under the Five Finger Mountain is also the blessing you have earned for several lifetimes of cultivation. You should focus on cultivating your heart and mind, meditate in seclusion under the mountain, at the same time restrain your violent tendencies, reflect on your past actions, ask yourself about your values and the role you want to play. You should rest here and wait for a highly achieved monk who will pass by here in 600 years. He will save you and you must assist him in obtaining the scriptures from the West. His name is Xuanzang Dot. Finally, I give you a Dharma name, Sun Wukong. You will become the Monkey King. You have had the cloud somersaulting and the golden cudgel in the past, you can fly tens of thousands of miles with one stretch. Do not rely solely on your talents and take shortcuts. You must use your own feet to walk your own journey and your own hands to create your own world. I hope that during these 600 years, you will truly understand that everything is empty, and that only then can you carry on your own mission. Monkey King Sun Wukong, I wish you good luck. Chapter 12 Descend Upon After the Buddha trapped Sun Wukong under the Five Finger Mountain, Trinity realized that their time had come. They decided to descend to Earth and use their own two feet to tell the world the truth about the universe. They witnessed Sun Wukong's emergence, a boulder coincidentally brought together Trinity's and Lucifer's powers to give birth to life. This means that in the universe, nothing is impossible, and everything that happens must have a reason. Earth was originally designed by Trinity as the best place for life and souls to practice, and Sun Wukong was nurtured by the natural spiritual energy of the mountains. He was both good and evil, light and dark, Buddha and demon. Before being subdued under the Five Finger Mountain, Sun Wukong's heart was always in a battlefield. He used fighting, anger, and hatred to cultivate and realize the value of his life. 
He fought and searched for the meaning of his existence all the way until the universe destined to bring him to the temple in heaven. From a monster monkey to a handsome monkey king, from a monkey king to a great sage equal to heaven, and then from a great sage to the monkey king's son Wukong. Life is born from unimaginable and precise circumstances, and we come to know ourselves and the world. We have rebelled, been reckless in our youth, been happy, angry, loved, and hated. Living, we have lost ourselves, but living, we have also come to understand ourselves. We use our own two feet to walk our own path, crawling, walking, running, falling, jumping, tired, winning and losing. Until one day, when we understand the meaning of our life, we find that our remaining time seems not enough. Finally, we cherish and seize the remaining time, and we all hope to contribute our life experiences to the next generation and the world. Because of Sun Wukong's emergence, Trinity knew that they had to walk the mortal world. They were the three persons of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They were the father of all creatures in the world, and the ruler of all souls. Finally, they would come to Earth in the form of a human being, as the Son of Man, to redeem humanity from sin. In the year 25 AD, Trinity was born as a human being in the family of a craftsman. Trinity was the craftsman of the universe, using exquisite craftsmanship and precise calculations to create everything in the universe that was so unimaginable. The operation of each celestial body, the succession of every biological species, and the endless cycle of the food chain were all calculated with such meticulousness. This is the kind of craftsmanship that only an advanced craftsman can achieve. Trinity chose the most ordinary craftsman's family and the lowliest manger to be born in. On Earth, they revealed themselves as the Messiah. Before the age of 30, they had been living an ordinary life, helping their father create different exquisite crafts as a craftsman. At that time, they were known as Jesus. They were just like any ordinary person. When they came to Earth, their soul was limited by the flesh, space, and time. At that time, Jesus did not know their identity, nor did they have the memory of the Trinity. They only felt the strong energy and faith inside them, which intuitively made them feel that they would live a different life. It was not until 55 AD that Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. At that moment, the sky changed, and he was inspired by the Holy Spirit. He finally remembered his role and mission in coming to Earth, and remembered that he was the Messiah who came to save the world and forgive humanity's original sin. After his baptism, the Holy Spirit led him directly to the wilderness of Jericho's mountains. In the future 40 days, the Messiah needed to face the temptations and challenges of Satan's army in this wilderness. This was the first test of the Messiah's preaching on earth, and it was also the revelation that Trinity expected to show to humanity through their son. Before creating and achieving great things, one must cultivate themselves. People all have seven emotions and six desires, but if they cannot resist temptations, they will never know their true value and needs. Lucifer had been waiting in the wilderness for a long time, and she was even more eager to move. This was her wish for many years. She remembered why she had become so miserable today, because of the appearance of this sun. When Lucifer was still the commander-in-chief of all the heavenly armies in heaven, if it weren't for the appearance of this sun, Trinity would have had all the angel armies kneel for him, and she would not have caused a revolution that led to the loss of all her rights and being cast into hell as Satan. It was rare for him to send sheep into the tiger's mouth today, and Lucifer thought that Trinity had done an extremely foolish thing. Clearly, Trinity enjoyed supreme glory in heaven and already had great power, why did they still have to descend to earth? This was an extremely high-risk move, and they came to earth in the form of a flesh body. The soul was locked in the flesh, they would lose their memory in heaven, and their abilities in heaven. This was equivalent to being naked under the sun, and at this moment, they could only be humiliated by Satan's army. Lucifer was both excited and angry at this time, she wanted to push the man in front of her down, she wanted to destroy Trinity's efforts and ideals, she wanted Trinity to taste her pain and losses. Chapter 13 Wilderness
In the 40-day battle, Messiah's first challenge was the lust of the flesh, including all forms of physical desire. Messiah battled with Satan for many days, without any food in his stomach. This was the weakest moment of his body and willpower. Lucifer tempted him to turn stones into food, but Messiah refused, saying, We are not alive just to satisfy our hunger, life has greater value and meaning. Today, the loss of materialism in society is due to a lack of understanding of our true needs in this world. If you knew this, we wouldn't be here challenging each other with Satan. Ha ha. Messiah, you speak with great eloquence and sharpness. Although Trinity conceived you with their soul, as a part of their triune nature, you possess your own independent free will. Your existence on Earth does not represent Trinity's will. You can choose your own path in life here, without following Trinity's direction and will. You have just been baptized in the Jordan River, and have had your first encounter with the Holy Spirit. I have always been concerned that Trinity may use you and make you suffer. Have you not doubted that Trinity may be using you to consolidate their power and betray anyone? Trinity has eternal life and is an absolute dictatorship. They can easily betray anyone to strengthen their power. Look at me, I was once one of their most beloved and trusted six-winged angels. They gave me unparalleled glory, but when I no longer had any use, they ultimately abandoned me. Lucifer, you are wrong. Although I have independent free will, I and the Father and the Holy Spirit are one. Although we have three roles and identities, our thoughts are in harmony and I understand the thoughts of the Father and the Holy Spirit very well. The Father never chose to abandon you, but you chose to abandon him. Your confidence began to turn into pride, then into inferiority. You were afraid of losing everything you had, and the more you were afraid, the tighter you held on. Your dark side sees through this point of yours, constantly consuming your soul. It pushes you from inferiority to arrogance, from fear to anger, and finally loses yourself, thinking that you are invincible and unbeatable. Today, you are responsible for your own fault. You thought you could control your own dark abyss, but in the end, you were controlled by the abyss. At this point, Lucifer heard Messiah's disrespectful response, and her emotions became extremely angry. How could this young man with yellow hair dare to talk to her like this? Messiah, do you think this is heaven? Do you still think you are the almighty trinity? Here, you are just an ordinary person, and ordinary people have emotions and desires. I don't believe what you say. If you have the ability, prove it to me with practical actions. Let's see if the Father and the Holy Spirit really value and care about you. After saying these words, Lucifer instantly flashed in front of Messiah. She used her magic to push Messiah to the edge of the temple. At this moment, as long as Messiah took half a step back, he would fall from the top of the temple into the 10,000 feet mountain range below and be crushed to pieces. Considering that Lucifer was using magic, Messiah couldn't move at all, and his body was completely controlled by Lucifer. Ha ha ha, Messiah! Go and ask your Holy Spirit what to do next. Call your father to come and save you. He loves you so much that he will definitely catch you. You trust him so much that you don't have to doubt. You can prove it to me right away. As soon as I let go, you will soon know the answer. You are just flesh and blood. I believe you are afraid of death. As long as you fall from here, you will become a pile of flesh and blood. If you are afraid now, beg me to spare you immediately. I will immediately withdraw Satan's army, and in the future, you can live your life well in the world, and you will not suffer any more torment. Yes, I am a flesh and blood body. Of course, I am afraid of death. But who in this world can avoid it? The authority of the Father and the Holy Spirit is not for you to use like this. Also, I have never doubted my faith, so why do I need to prove it? Only when you are weak inside do you need physical evidence to prove it. When you believe in love, there is no need to prove its existence. Only when you lack love do you need to use countless surface evidence to prove it to yourself. Lucifer, there is no need to say more. If you want to kill, go ahead. I will not change my original intention. At this moment, Lucifer is in a dilemma. 
She originally just wanted to scare Messiah and make him change his mind. She knew that if she let go now, there would only be two possible outcomes. One is that Messiah falls to his death, and Trinity will definitely not let her go, fearing an unbearable outcome. The other is that God the Father and the Holy Spirit save Messiah, which will further strengthen his faith and increase his confidence in opposing Lucifer in the future. Neither of these two outcomes is ideal for Lucifer. You are a sharp-tongued guy, full of benevolence, righteousness, propriety, and wisdom. You really are just like your father. You know that by going down this path, you will eventually be rejected and crucified by the people on earth. Is it necessary for you to endure such pain? Aren't you afraid? Right now, I can offer you wealth and luxury, a worry-free life. And you can immediately receive the glory of all nations. Why not do it? Messiah, think about it seriously. Either I let go now and you turn into blood in an instant. Or I'll give you wealth, luxury, and a worry-free life, and you can enjoy power for the rest of your life. Lucifer, don't you have all these things now? Are you happy? Are you joyful? Why is it that despite having everything you mentioned earlier, wealth, power, desires, readily available to you, the expression on your face carries nothing but anger and self-doubt? I don't want to become like you. I know I have a more valuable path to walk, even if it's filled with thorns. Yet, I find solace in my heart because I know where my destination lies. I have a strong and unwavering faith, so the pain in the process is just a part of my life. Lucifer, either let go and push me off the cliff or take your legion of demons and leave. You cannot topple my faith, let alone my heavenly father. But before you make your decision, there's something I want to tell you. Since the father and I share thoughts, I understand his intentions. Before time began, the father was trapped in the abyss, struggling and suffering immensely. But in the end, he chose to break free from the darkness, unshackled by fear and desire, becoming the eternal king. And then, Lucifer, your pride and anger were devoured by the abyss. You chose to deviate from righteousness and forever sell your soul to darkness. Your radiance remains forever trapped within the abyss. You traded power and desire, but in doing so, you permanently lost a pure soul. However, the Father has never given up on you. He could easily destroy you, but he never chose to do so. He understands the cosmic balance of yin and yang. The Father ultimately overcame the abyss because he didn't seek to destroy it. Instead, he accepted, embraced, and utilized it. You were consumed because your pride and ego couldn't tolerate failure or imperfections. In the end, you believed you could stare into the abyss, but in reality, it was the abyss that gazed back at you and consumed you. While I, too, experience fear and the dread of death, the greatest difference between us is that I possess an unwavering faith that surpasses my fears. I know that the challenges and pains in the process cannot shake me because I understand where my endpoint lies. But you, you don't understand the value of life or where your ultimate destination leads. Therefore, all material possessions, pleasures, power, and desires of the world easily sway you. Of course, I don't exclude the possibility that you have constructed an invincible set of beliefs today, believing that materialism and power can provide you with everything. But let me remind you, if that's the truth, why do you possess everything today, yet fail to exhibit even a hint of joy on your face? Because you fear losing, you hold on tighter. You claim Trinity to be dictatorial, but are you the enlightened ruler? Dictatorship originates from fear, the fear of loss. That's why greater military force is employed to control everything. Once that power is awakened, it leads to an irreversible descent into the abyss. You continuously wave the flag of liberty, merely seeking justification for overthrowing the Trinity regime. However, when someone with a fragile heart reaches the core of power, it unleashes the turmoil of the world. Lastly, you should be grateful to the Trinity. They have the ability to create and destroy you, yet their mercy refrains from doing so. You fell from heaven, devastated, and eventually became Satan. The belief that sustains you today is to overthrow him, but he cannot separate himself from your existence. At this moment, Lucifer was filled with mixed emotions. On the one hand, Messiah had completely understood her inner struggles and conflicts. Suddenly, she felt a slight warmth in her heart, 
as if she had finally met someone who understood her on this long road. On the other hand, she realized that the person in front of her was her mortal enemy, the one who had taken everything from her when he appeared years ago. In order to maintain her own face and dignity, she commanded an army of millions of demons. If she showed any hint of softness now, where would her pride be? While Lucifer was still lost in thought, the Holy Spirit instantly released her from her demonic power. Then, a strong wind swept in and carried Lucifer and her army of demons away from the wilderness. After 40 days of temptation and challenge, Messiah's body began to move again. Although his flesh became very fragile, his spiritual faith became stronger. He brushed off the dust and took steps to leave the wilderness and head downhill. In the last three years of his life on earth, Messiah brought about an influence that lasted thousands of years and beyond. His coming shattered a new world, and from then on, human history was measured by him. Before his birth, it was known as BC. After his birth, it became the new century AD. Chapter 14 Ashura Buddha, it's you again. What are you going to release me? I have been trapped under this mountain for I don't know how many years. You keep coming here to preach about the principles of truth, kindness, and beauty. But your heavenly teachings are useless to me, and I cannot stand them at all. Either you let me out right now, or once I am out, I will kill every single one of you, whether you are gods, demons, or monsters. We are calm. You've been meditating in seclusion here for hundreds of years. Haven't you figured it out yet? I thought you had high intelligence. Meditating here should help you control the anger in your heart quickly. It seems that 600 years is still too short. Let's make it 6,000 years. Don't call me Sun Wukong anymore, Buddha. I've talked until my tongue is covered in moss. Who wants such an unpleasant name? My real name is Great Sage. Also, your joke isn't funny at all. It's been over a hundred years and you keep repeating the same thing. If you're not tired, I am. I don't have your patience, so do what you want. If you don't let me rest, forget about it. I'm going to sleep now, so leave if you don't have anything else to say. Don't disturb my rest. Okay, okay, don't blame me for being chatty. Today is the first day of the Lunar New Year, and I brought some fresh fruits for you. Happy New Year, Goku rest well. During these hundreds of years, Buddha would visit Goku from time to time to share with him some wisdom about the universe and nature. Buddha patiently guided Goku, although his anger was not completely eliminated, it could still be suppressed temporarily. Over time, Buddha and Goku's relationship became that of both a teacher and friend. Although Goku had a strong personality and a sharp tongue, he still appreciated Buddha's efforts over these hundreds of years. Until the day arrived. I am neither a Buddha nor a demon, I am just a reflection of your true self in the mirror of your heart. My attributes stem from the desires and beliefs deep within your heart, I am ever changing like water, light as air or heavy as a mountain, soft as silk, strong as steel calm as a still mirror, fierce as a wild beast. I am what you fear to face the most, for I am the truest version of yourself, the bottomless depths of your subconscious, the unseen part of the iceberg in the ocean, the infinite realm of your psyche. You are willing to display only the splendid side of yourself in front of others, but the darkness behind it is what you refuse to confront, and you wish to bury it as deep as possible. It hides various faces of yours, some of which may be so filthy and ugly that you cannot believe or accept them yourself. We, the Azura clan, have always been dwelling in the kingdom of darkness. It is neither heaven nor hell. The purpose of our existence is to fight. Fight against the heavens, the earth, and human beings until only one of the two outcomes happens, either you continue fighting until you jump out of the abyss and find the value of your life, or you fight until you exhaust all your energy and perish forever, falling into the abyss of eternal oblivion. That is why wherever there is a dark abyss, there will be our existence as the Azura clan. Our voice is like a dream in the midnight, 
When you are in the silent night, you will hear our constant call, representing the desires deep within your heart. Either we die horse, or you perish in conflict and struggle. In Wukong's dream, it was pitch black and he couldn't see anything. Suddenly, he heard a mysterious voice in the darkness, and they had the conversation as written above. Goku suddenly woke up from his dream, but found that he couldn't move his body at all and was having difficulty breathing the more he struggled. He muttered to himself, using all his strength, Why can't I move my body? Who are you? Who are all of you? Who's trapping me? If you have the guts, come out and face me, and stop pretending to be gods. I am the abyss in your heart, the demon in the depths. I am here to help you. I know you want to leave this place very much, and I have a way to help you escape. Can you help me leave? I don't know who you are, but help me lift the seal immediately. Quickly, help me lift the seal. Then, we'll see if you really have the ability to help me leave. If you dare to deceive me, you can forget about leaving this place alive. Don't worry about your body, it will automatically unfreeze in a moment. And I won't lie to you, because we are of the same flesh and blood. You forget, I am the abyss in your heart, I know you best. If you didn't have this desire, I wouldn't have appeared. For hundreds of years, you have suppressed your anger, your hatred, your humiliation. You seem to have calmed down on the surface, but the real you hasn't, and it's getting worse and worse. Life is like a pendulum effect. The higher the pendulum swings to the left, the greater the force it will swing to the right. You have been suppressing your negative emotions all along, and you have never dealt with them. You've been through a lot, great sage. You have always longed for revenge, always wanted to eliminate those who humiliated you. You are the great sage of heaven, trapped in the Five Finger Mountain. How can you maintain your dignity? Are you really waiting sincerely? What if that enlightened monk doesn't appear? What if Buddha is deceiving you? Do you plan to spend the rest of your life here? Great sage, I think you are such a good monkey. You've been trapped here, hurt, insulted, yet you have developed compassion and started to forgive them. Ha, you are really a great and compassionate monkey king. I thought about it and realized that I was wrong. You don't really want to leave, you just enjoy everything here. You like tranquility, being trapped, and even Buddha bringing fresh bananas to feed you from time to time. Great Sage, you have changed look at yourself now, you don't look like the Great Sage of Heaven anymore. The former domineering, confident, powerful, and often competing with the Heavens have all died. Now you are just a monkey full of Buddha's heart, and you don't even dare to eat meat. I see some bananas next to me, do you want me to feed you some? At this point, Wukong's anger had reached its peak, but he couldn't move his body and even speaking was very difficult. The usually eloquent monkey had been insulted by Ashura all along, and at this point, all that was in his mind was anger and hatred. He was clearly the invincible monkey king, but today he had fallen into a monkey without even freedom. All of today's events were thanks to the Buddha Tathagata. He really wanted to come out and kill this arrogant Ashura right away. But unfortunately, he only heard the voice and couldn't see any trace. By the way, the Great Sage should have this quality. Do you want to come out and kill me right away? I'll be waiting for you outside of the Five Finger Mountain. I love to fight, and I know you do too. Also, the Buddha and other immortals in Heaven, you're not going to seek revenge on them? Now, everyone in the Three Realms of Heaven, Earth, and man is making fun of you. You still call yourself the Great Sage equal to Heaven. Even Trinity hasn't made a move yet, and the Buddha has already subdued you with one hand. You might as well call yourself the Great Scenic Mountain. In another hundred years, you and this place will become a tourist attraction, and people will come every day to offer you fresh bananas. Show some spirit, Great Sage equal to Heaven. If you really want to leave here, there must be a way. What can't you sacrifice for your revenge and to regain your dignity? I've already said that if you really want to leave the Five Finger Mountain, really want revenge, really want to defeat the strongest god in the universe, I can help you. I only need one thing from you, I need to trade your soul with me. 
I can help you leave, help you seek revenge, help you defeat the Buddha and Trinity. Chapter 15 A Single Thought Ashura, are you sick? I give you my soul. I am not in control of anything. And how can I trust you? Are you real? Yeah, you're right again. You really shouldn't trust me. Since you don't trust me, I'll leave now. You can wait here and hope to meet Tang Sanzang someday. Ha. Huh? Goodbye. Wait. Yukon was worried that Shua would leave and miss this opportunity forever, so he immediately responded to stop him from leaving. Great Sage, don't hesitate anymore. Frankly speaking, do you have any other choice now besides trusting me? Unless you want to stay here forever. And in this world, only we Asuras have the ability to help you trade your soul without dying and become stronger and immortal. We Asuras reside in the Dark Abyss, and I am the desire deep within you. Since we are of the same body, why would I want to harm you? Moreover, I guarantee that I understand you better than anyone else in this world. Alright! I will trade my soul with you. Remember, if you deceive me, you will die without a proper burial. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Wake up quickly. Buddha kept tapping Will Kong's body, hoping to wake it up quickly. After several calls, Wukong gradually regained consciousness and entered a state of awakening, but its body was still weak and powerless. What happened? Where am I? Why am I sleeping here? Buddha, you are also here. All right. All right. I just happened to be looking for you to seek revenge on you. Revenge. Revenge. All you think about is revenge. Can't you see your current condition? Do you even have the ability to take revenge now? I'm right in front of you, come on I'll let you take revenge. What's the use? You can't even lift your fist. What kind of revenge can you take? You almost lost your life just now. I'm grateful that Trinity and I arrived just in time to stop your soul trade with the Azura. Will you come? Have you gone crazy? Have you wasted these few hundred years at the Five Finger Mountain? Do you know that once you officially hand over your soul to the Azura, you can never turn back? You will truly become a demon, a demon without a soul. Trinity! That's the one. I was looking for. Haha. <laughs> Great I don't have to go to heaven to find him again. Today, let me just take care of him first. Where is he? Enough, Wukong. Stop your evil thoughts. It's because of your temperament that you almost became a demon. If it weren't for Trinity seeing this early and arranging for you to be at the foot of the Five Finger Mountain, you would have already become a demon. You have the potential to achieve enlightenment, but unfortunately, your violent temper prevented you from doing so. You could only rely on the spiritual energy of the Ming River, the Jade Dew, and the mountains to dilute your hatred and demonic nature. At the same time, you waited for hundreds of years for your destined one, Tang Sanzang, to come and take you to the western regions to study and become a Buddha. You can become a Buddha or a demon. Why did your desire summon the Azura from the depths of your heart today, and almost trade your soul away? It is because your demonic nature is constantly churning in your heart. It has been hundreds of years, Tang Sanzang, already set off from the Tang Dynasty of the Central Plains. You are just one step away from achieving enlightenment. If we hadn't caught up today, everything you have done and waited for here would be in vain. The Azuras are a belligerent ethnic group that does not belong to the three major realms of gods, demons, and humans. They have always lived in another space within the Dark Abyss and can also lurk behind any living being with a soul. They need to feed on souls as nutrients, and their voices can be heard wherever there are desires. 
the fall of Lucifer and the Gospel Angels was due to their inflated desires, which ultimately led them to fall into the Dark Abyss and be degraded by Trinity as fallen angels. Later, in order to gain greater power and compete with Heaven, they directly sold their souls to the Azures in the Abyss and became Satan. The Gospel Angels and the Azura group have always coexisted in a light and dark form. They do not exist in the same universe, but exist in two completely different parallel universes. Therefore, in the universe created by Trinity, the Azuras have neither a physical body nor a soul. They use the wormhole that connects the two parallel universes to lure the desires of living beings with souls from the Dark Abyss until they are absorbed into the parallel universe of the Azuras. The creator and ruler of the Gospel Angels is Trinity, while the creator and ruler of the Asuras is the Asura King Rahu. Trinity, how long has it been since we heard each other's voices? Although we have always existed in two different parallel universes, I have always felt your presence, as if you were always by my side. Since the mother of the universe split into the yin and yang of Taiji from the Wuji, the universe has given birth to life from nothingness, and we have each become responsible for two different parallel universes. We both gain life from the Wuji, and we are each responsible for managing one yin and one yang. At that time, we did not know about each other's existence, and we were each in our own universe. The universe split into yin and yang from the Big Bang. At that moment, we became two different creating gods in parallel universes. You are in charge of the universe of light, and I am responsible for the universe of darkness. In the universe, there has never been a distinction between good and evil between yin and yang or light and darkness. There is only positive and negative energy created by mutual generation and mutual inhibition, and we have been maintaining the operation of the entire universe. We both work towards the same goal, just using different methods. You use positive energy while I use negative energy, but we both supply the balance of energy and life for the macro universe. We have also developed more diverse parallel universes in our respective parallel universes. Finally, just like a spider web, it starts from one point and becomes two points, then four points, and then eight points, and so on. Eventually the universe exists like a network, with different possibilities, timelines, and infinite parallel universes. At this point, the Azura King Rahu transmitted his voice to Trinity through a black hole from his own parallel universe. My dear fellow brother Rahu, I haven't heard your voice since the beginning of the universe. Of course, I have always felt your presence with me, but hearing your voice directly again feels very familiar and warm. Although I can only see the possibilities of all the parallel universes in my parallel universe, and cannot see your universe, I can sense that we will soon reunite. Since the birth of the Monkey King Mukong, I knew that the day we would meet again was coming. Everything that has happened is not a coincidence. The mother of the universe had arranged for our meeting by giving birth to Yukon through a large boulder during the Great Flood in the human world 13,000 years ago. The protagonist you came to find today is not Yukon, and you knew that I would appear. So your purpose is to lure me here through the demonization of Yukon. 600 years. When I arranged for Yukon to be sealed at the Five Finger Mountain, it was not only to control his violent temper and wait for Tang Sanzang to come. For our meeting today, I also went through a journey in the human world through my physical body. In addition to self-cultivation, I personally shared the Tao of the universe and the human world. I believe that our meeting this time is for the same purpose. Chapter 16 Taiji In the early stages of the formation of the universe, the only universe and living being gradually grew. However, when this universe and life reached a bottleneck, it triggered a cosmic explosion. After this explosion, the only universe and living being returned to zero, and then they began to split, dividing into two from one before the explosion, and both regenerated and grew again. At this time, there were two parallel universes and two parallel living beings. They were located in two different dimensional spaces and had no contact with each other. These two universes and living beings were respectively dominated by the positive energy and negative energy universe, and the two split living beings were called Trinity and Luoho. 
At this moment, the universe and life are still in the abyss of the universe after the Big Bang. Ultimately, which soul represents positive energy and negative energy has not yet been determined, depending on who can escape from the black hole first and become the master of the positive energy universe, and the one who stays in the black hole to establish the universe becomes the master of the negative energy universe. After the Big Bang, Trinity, in a state of sleep for a long time, struggling to escape from the abyss. Unfortunately, no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't escape the gravity of the black hole. The harder he struggled, the stronger the entanglement became. Trinity was once lost and wanted to give up, and his fear filled him, making him unable to think calmly. On the contrary, Luoho was already close to the edge of leaving the abyss. During the process of sleeping in the deep black hole, he remained calm. He had no fear of darkness and loneliness, nor did he have too much emotional loss, so he quickly walked in the black hole, looking for a way out. But unfortunately, when the way out was within reach and he could take a step forward to the exit, Luo Ho was curious and became interested in everything about the black hole. He had some attachment to the feeling of dark gravity. He arrogantly believed that he had found a way out and thought that it was okay to explore the black hole. At this moment, even though the way out was right in front of him, he turned his body and looked into the depths of the black hole. At this moment, he heard a voice calling him from the depths, and Luo Ho was attracted by this voice. He kept staring at the source of the sound in the depths of the abyss, and in an instant, his whole body was sucked away by the dark gravity and disappeared in the black hole. After many efforts, from fear to facing, from giving up to persisting, Trinity understood the laws of the universe and mastered the balance of yin and yang, using positive and negative energy. At this time, Trinity gradually woke up from his sleep in the abyss, and he understood his purpose and value from the depths of the black hole where he was located. At this time, the rulers of the two parallel universes have also been determined. After Luoho was sucked away by the black hole, he will forever stay in the darkness. Luoho learned to use the power of darkness and established his own universe in the black hole. The living environment of the stars in this universe is extremely harsh. There is no sunlight, no nutrients, and resources are extremely scarce. To survive in this universe, one must be strong, fierce, and warlike. The daily work of the people here is to fight and survive. There is no high civilization, nor the development of high culture. Despite this, they are born with dark energy. Black holes can absorb any matter and transform it into energy. Luoho has the ability to control black holes, and his people are regarded as a fighting nation and need to absorb the souls of other lives as nutrients. Even though they seem to be such a cruel nation, their starting point is connected to Trinity's parallel universe. One is the craftsman of the dark world, and the other is the craftsman of the light world. They both maintain the balance of the universe, allowing all things to develop and maintain. Although Luaho's black hole universe is extremely small in size, it is also extremely important to Trinity's universe. They are mutually born and antagonistic to each other. If either is missing, both parallel universes will collapse. From the understanding of the Abyss, they knew each other's existence and understood that black and light complement each other so they knew that there must be another self in a certain corner. However, they had never seen or met each other until one day when Luoho connected Trinity's parallel universe through a wormhole after many attempts. At this moment, it was their first contact. My good brother, I finally found you. I am your twin brother from another parallel universe, and my name is Rahu. My universe is inside a black hole, and I use the power of darkness, which is in direct opposition to your universe. I have been searching for my twin brother, who controls the universe of light. How did you manage to exist in the parallel universe opposite to mine? Being able to hear the voice of another self from another universe is truly special. I know you will come to find me, and I have been waiting for you. My name is Trinity. I am in the process of creating everything in this universe, but everything is ready and I have only been waiting for your arrival. Even though we live in two different parallel universes and cannot meet, the creation and survival of my universe requires your dark power. 
Without the gravity and energy of black holes, the celestial bodies and living beings in my universe would have difficulty surviving in balance. Similarly, your universe must provide me with food. I will establish the Azura race in my dark universe, and we need to awaken our lives through battle. Therefore, we need a lot of food to exchange for energy, to maintain our strong and combative bodies. Our universe will absorb the stars and materials of your universe through black holes, and our race will absorb the souls of life in your universe through the dark abyss. Of course, everything is in order, and there are countless relationships between absorption and exhalation. We absorb the materials and souls that should be absorbed, and then exhale the energy that you need. This equivalent transaction also balances our universes at the same time. My twin brother Rao, although I cannot see your parallel universe, and you cannot see mine. But I believe that we both love our universes, and we both come from the same source. Although we have our own free will, our goals are the same. I cannot be without you, and you cannot be without me. If we miss even a hair's breadth, we will be far from our goal. Eventually, both of our parallel universes will be destroyed, and we will disappear with them. We must work together, as we are the best craftsmen and engineers in the universe. We both understand that once we activate and establish the balance of our universe, the multiverse will also split and branch out with our parallel universe, creating an infinite number of different multiverses. The key to the reproduction and continuation of everything in the universe lies in change. We must constantly replace and change. Just like the universe goes from the Wuji silence and emptiness to the gradual change of Tai Chi. Tai Chi changes to the balance point, giving birth to the yin and yang two instruments, then the spring, summer, autumn, and winter four images, and gradually giving birth to the eight forms of heaven, earth, water, fire, thunder, wind, mountains, and rivers, extending to an infinite timeline and possibility, to an infinite number of multiverses. All of the above are laws of the universe, and as long as we activate the one, it will grow and spread exponentially from then on. The Cosmic Mother Wuji gave birth to us. We were both born from Tai Chi. From that moment on, we have been interdependent, like lips and teeth. We, the Yin and Yang Liangi, maintain the balance of the universe, as we are of the same root. Our state is to live together, or die apart. So Trinity, you don't need to worry too much. We have been inseparable since birth. We breathe in and out together, alternating with each other. I take what I need from your universe, transform it, and give it back to your universe as needed. Rao, we made a pact at the beginning of the universe with three clauses. In order to ensure the healthy and sustainable development of the universe, and to balance the reproduction of all things in the universe, I will provide suitable food for you and your people, and you will provide corresponding energy for our lives. The dark energy of your universe and the light energy of my universe must follow the laws of the universe, cooperate with each other, and benefit each other, until the energies are maintained in a balanced state. As long as we, the two brothers, exist, we will abide by our promise. We will maintain the interests of our respective universes, in order to achieve balance in the entire universe. Trinity, don't worry. You go and establish your bright universe. And I will be busy creating my world, building my great Azure race. Today is our first meeting, and I hope for our future cooperation. But Trinity, remember, we will meet again. But I believe you also understand that we are communicating this time for creation. And the next time we meet, the universe will be on the verge of decline, ready to welcome the end of days. Take care, my brother. I look forward to your universe shining brightly, and you will soon welcome the dark shadow projected by my universe. Goodbye. Chapter 17 Revelation The truth of all things boils down to one word, breathing. Inhalation and exhalation belong to opposite poles, but neither can be missing. From small organisms on Earth to the entire universe, the basic condition for their operation is breathing. If breathing is unbalanced or stops, everything in the universe will also face destruction. Black holes absorb matter in the universe and exhale energy. From a microscopic perspective, the appearance of black holes destroys celestial bodies and life. 
but from a macroscopic perspective, the universe needs the energy released by black holes. It makes certain substances disappear and destroy, but it also creates new substances. Life continues in an endless cycle, and this is also the principle of balance in nature. Death and darkness are not scary, they are inevitable processes in all things. What is scary is not being able to face and accept them and choosing to escape and fear. Trinity and Raha met for the first time at the beginning of the universe and they understood each other's importance. Although they exist in two opposing universes, they are also closely connected to each other. Since their separation at the beginning of the universe, Trinity and Rahu have each developed their own multiple universes in parallel spaces of light and darkness. Until their second encounter today, this gap has experienced countless cycles of spring and autumn in the human world. Trinity, our first contact was at the beginning of the universe. The purpose was to plan the blueprint for the birth of the universe and our respective developments. We each worked in our own universes, creating life and establishing infinite possibilities in diverse space-times. However, this time our second encounter is to communicate about the end of the world. In my dark universe, I see the possibilities of multiple universes developing. Most of the diverse universes can see that the consumption of black holes is increasing and they are absorbing more nutrients. Since I cannot see the diverse worlds that have developed in your bright universe, but from the expanding trend and speed of black holes, we can all foresee that doomsday will eventually come. Rahu, under the multiple possibilities of my bright universe, I have seen the arrival of the apocalypse. The four horsemen of the apocalypse have awakened. They are knights who can freely enter and exit wormholes without being distorted or transformed. They are gradually sounding the horn of the apocalypse. In our respective universes, you and I have created different forms of life. Although we live in parallel universes without contact, wormholes connect us. However, the four horsemen are not beings created by you and me. Their existence is born from the nutrients of wormholes. Black holes absorb matter and release energy through white holes. In this process, 90% of the material components are transported from one parallel universe to another, while the remaining 10% remains in the wormhole space. Over time, these remaining components ferment and give birth to individual lives, nurturing today's horsemen of the apocalypse. They are the white horseman carrying a bow and arrow, the red horseman carrying a sword, the black horseman carrying a scale, and the pale horseman carrying a sickle. Wherever they go, they bring plague, famine, war, and death. They are all symbols of destruction. Before the world is destroyed, they will come with weapons and sound the horn. Yes, for the end of the world, we are all mentally prepared. Everything that has a beginning must have an end, and the end is just the beginning of another. Just like us, we are all omnipotent gods in our respective universes, but we also have limitations. In your universe, I, Rahu, am not a god but just the dark side of life that you created, and in my world, nothing exists for you. The alternation of all things is such an interesting thing, and in the eternal truth of the universe, there always exists two opposing energies that give birth to each other. Today it's me, Rahu, and you, Trinity, but tomorrow it could be others. We are just names that could disappear in the universe, but these two positive and negative energies will never disappear. In the laws of the universe, omnipotence never exists, only balance. If there is only one omnipotent life form, the infinite expansion within will eventually lead to infinite shrinkage because its dominance cannot bear even a straw. But the two opposing energies that give birth to each other exist between heaven and earth. They rely on and supervise each other, making sure neither side becomes complacent and both sides develop. In the vast universe, Rahu and Trinity's positive and negative energies push the universe's movement. In your parallel world, there are also the energies of the evangelist angel and Satan, representing light and darkness. I used to think that our Azura clan was a blessed people. Although our parallel universe had a very harsh environment, our strong people were the only ones that existed. I didn't realize that there was another energy threatening us, but in the end, I discovered that this fallacy could not exist. 
When the black hole officially operates, the four horsemen of the apocalypse have begun to gestate, and our clan can only accept destruction in the face of the four horsemen. Trinity, our Azura clan can easily devour the soul of the life forms you created but cannot defeat the four horsemen. And only the energy from the light, which comes from you and your evangelist angel, can subdue the riders of the apocalypse. Rahu, I have seen the vision of the apocalypse in my multiverse. In my world, the four horsemen will bring the signs of the end of days. They will respectively bring plague, war, and famine to humanity, causing a quarter of the population on Earth to die. As a result, the world will become more marginalized, dictators will rise, and false gods will appear. The remaining people will be in a state of panic, and the army of Satan will take advantage of their weakness and fear to deceive the masses. Lucifer will be worshipped as a god by humans for a time, as she uses their weakness to push herself onto the altar. She will take on the form of a dragon, and humans will worship her, hoping to gain a little peace. But when the seals and trumpets are opened, my Archangel Michael will lead the army of angels to descend upon the world again. Finally, I will return to the world as the Messiah riding on a shining horse. The Radiant Knights will lead the four horsemen of the Apocalypse back through the wormhole. The coming of the end times is also the beginning of a new world, and at that time, souls will understand the true meaning. The earth that I designed was originally a spiritual dojo. The human body, three-dimensional space, and four-dimensional timeline were originally limitations and restrictions that brought about awakening through practice. The desire for worldly possessions seems to be the temptation of Lucifer and Satan, but it is actually the soul's own attachment to the world. Money, power, and lust are only amplified desires through Satan, but as long as one does not let go of oneself, one will still live in the pain of the world. Lucifer and Satan are also shadows projected by Rahu's dark universe, adding a balance of dark energy to my world through your distant parallel universes. Money, power, and lust themselves are not the problem, but the excessive pursuit of desire that ultimately leads life into the abyss. The coming of the end times is also a spiritual awakening in another sense, as I see the development of humanity in multiple universes. High technology and rapid growth were originally a good thing, but they brought about endless desires. The downfall of every highly civilized society was not due to the civilization itself, but the endless pursuit of it. This desire caused souls to ignore the wholeness of the universe and destroyed the balance of nature's laws. In the long flow of life, every peak is followed by decline. In multiple parallel universes of Earth, technology and the Internet will unlock the mysteries of the universe, stars, time, nature, and life for humans. But this well-intentioned thing is being used by evil desires. Some groups will use technology to gain mastery of information and then use this advantage to control the lives of others. Although some life is being destroyed in the universe, and some is being born, from a macro perspective, positive and negative energy are both for the balance of the universe and the development of a better world. But if one sacrifices the overall interests of the world for one's own benefit, this violates the laws of the universe and will ultimately be destroyed. So as Rahu said, we can be replaced, but positive and negative energy and the four horsemen of the apocalypse will never disappear. Trinity, there's something I'm very curious about. I believe you know that before we became the yin and yang, there was a big bang in the universe. It was precisely because of this big bang that our lives were able to begin. But did the mother of the universe ever talk to you about or say anything about what happened before this big bang? Chapter 18 Singularity Singularity exists at the center of a black hole, which is a space of infinite small volume, infinite density and gravity, and a completely twisted space-time. Any matter existing around the singularity will be flattened from three-dimensional space to two-dimensional plane, and entering the core of the singularity will further shrink to one or lower dimensions and eventually become zero. In the universe, from birth, growth to decline, any star will eventually collapse due to gravity and trigger a big bang, shrinking to infinity. When it shrinks below the Schwarzschild radius of each matter, it will form a black hole, and the matter will be absorbed by the singularity inside the black hole. For example, 
The sword shield radius of the Earth is 9 millimeters, and the sword shield radius of the Sun is 3 kilometers. Before Trinity and Rahu were born, there was a century-old Big Bang in the universe. When the universe was in the chaotic and void state of Uti, a faint light brought the first life to the universe. This life made the universe transform from Uti to Taiji, and this life grew rapidly in the only universe. At this time, he first realized that he was the first life in the universe, and he had supreme power and ability. He can create any life, and he is the only god in the universe. He quickly mastered his own ability and created all things in his own world. He called himself Anu. Anu created the first batch of higher creatures in the universe according to his own ideal appearance. He called this batch of higher creatures gods to highlight his identity, and he called himself the father of gods. These higher creatures are burly and strong, born warriors. They have both flesh and soul, but their bodies are different from human beings as we know them. Their bodies are connected with their souls, and their bodies can be raised and lowered in dimensions at any time, in different spaces. Their skin surface has indestructible scales, which are hard and shiny, and they are not afraid of cold and hot flames. They have fangs and can bite through anything hard. They have big eyes and can see through materials beyond three dimensions. They can travel in the universe and enter the depths of stars. They have high intelligence and free will. Their blood is blue, and they have the eye of infinity. And their daily work is to worship Anu, the father of gods. Anu lives in the universe that is praised every day, and he and the high intelligence of the gods have eternal life. They lived and lost themselves in the drunken happiness. In the eternal and worry-free world, where is the value of life? Anu is a crazy god. He has two poles of yin and yang in his body. He was born with infinite power and rights, and his arrogance, madness, and self-righteousness blinded him. The dullness of his eyes, but unfortunately, he knew it was too late. The entire universe has been devastated by the war between the gods and demons. In the end, Anu created another kind of higher creature, the Demon Clan. And he also called himself the mother of all demons. So he is both the father of gods and the mother of all demons. At first, Anu only asked the gods and demons to sing praises to himself every day and see whose voice was the loudest and sang the most beautiful songs. Later, it could not satisfy him. He directly built a ring and let them fight until one of them was destroyed. They are like the strongest spear and shield, and there is no difference in intelligence and combat power. And Anu's daily pleasure is to provoke the contradiction between the two sides and let the flames of hatred burn to the top. Unfortunately, under the infinite burning of desire, it will eventually burn itself. Anu deliberately provoked the contradiction between the gods and demons. Their mutual hatred has reached a critical point. Anu considers himself the parent of all things, and everything must be able to plan. Unfortunately, this time the war between the two sides has burned out of control. They will not listen to Anu's words anymore because they have a clear goal of destroying each other. Their existence value has become more fulfilling. They think that the existence of life is not to sing praises to Anu, but to eliminate each other. This clear and concise goal has united the two ethnic groups. They pushed down Anu and killed each other. Anu's created universe was finally destroyed between the hatred of the two sides. Before the explosion, there was another universe. This destructive war caused the imbalance of the entire universe. And the root cause of all this is Anu's madness. His arrogance and madness made the creatures in the universe suffer for his own desires. Anu regretted what he had done until the last moment of his life. His dictatorship and single vision blinded his bright eyes, but unfortunately, it was too late. The entire universe has been destroyed by the gods and demons. Finally, Anu, with a heart full of despair, attracted the first century-old Big Bang in the universe under the gravity collapse of the universe. His universe shrank rapidly from infinity to zero. The universe of Anu finally shrank to the lowest critical point and formed the Abyss Black Hole, which was the first to occur in the universe. And the singularity inside the black hole swallowed Anu and all the creatures, matter, and stars in his universe. 
After the universe completed the first Big Bang, Anu and everything in his universe, including creatures, matter, and stars, were flattened and reduced to zero dimensions by the singularity. After the singularity absorbed the matter, it was converted into energy and released on the other side of the white hole in the black hole. At this time, the universe split into two and gave birth to two parallel universes, and the tunnel connecting the two was a wormhole. Everything started again from one to two, and at this time, the two universes began to conceive new life. Before Anu was swallowed by the black hole, he stored his memory in his soul. He hoped that when the singularity transformed him and his universe into energy, the remaining memory could be passed down. The life born at the end of the wormhole could always remember the law of balance of the universe and nature. He hopes that the new parallel universe can make good use of the energy of the two poles, positive and negative, yin and yang, light and dark, both breed and compete, supervise and support the balance of the entire universe. Chapter 19 End of Days The day of the apocalypse has finally arrived and the four horsemen of the apocalypse have come with their divine mission. They attack the current order of the universe, where everything is numb and there is bloody slaughter. Nature is destroyed, unbalanced and scarred. The four horsemen aim to destroy the existing universe and start a new era. At this time, Rahu's dark universe has been destroyed, and most of the Asura clan has been wiped out in this battle. Rahu's body was thrown into a black hole by the Four Horsemen, and he was gradually consumed by a singularity. In fact, Rahu had seen his own fate in his own multiple universes when he had his second encounter with Trinity. However, he did not tell Trinity about his own end, but hoped to use his own power of light to repel the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Anu's memory during his sacrifice was also hidden in Rahu's soul. Rahu was originally a newborn life, learning and growing in the darkness. He was only one step away from stepping out of the darkness early on, and when he left, there was a loud voice calling him. It turned out that at that time, the voice came from Anu's memory, and he told Rahu the whole story. After knowing the beginning and the end of the matter, Rahu stopped and chose not to step out of the abyss. He believed that this was the destiny chosen for him. Since Anu's memory flowed into his soul, he also knew the origin and past and present life of the entire universe. Therefore, he chose to become the Dark God and stayed in the Black Hole to create his own universe. Finally, before disappearing into the universe, Rahu murmured, Trinity, I entrust my last hope to you. Sorry for not telling you about my fate truthfully earlier, because I knew you were the only hope to stop the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. The last time I came to you, besides communicating the revelation of the end, was also to say goodbye to you. Goodbye. I am Rahu on the bright side. Let me bear the consequences in the darkness as Trinity. Goodbye, my brother. After speaking, Rahu was completely absorbed by the singularity and disappeared into the universe. At this time, the four horsemen had entered Trinity's universe and were causing great destruction. They brought plagues, diseases, famine, and war to the world. As Trinity had predicted in his multiple universes, one quarter of the human population on Earth was destroyed. The remaining panicked humans were also deceived by Lucifer, worshipping different gods and demons as long as they had a chance to survive. Their inner fear had become Satan's best tool. Lucifer had not seen humans so corrupt and fearful for a long time, and she was excited. She thought her kingdom was coming, and Trinity's good days were over. Lucifer deceived humans in the form of a dragon, constantly threatening them, making the lost humans more desperate in the face of the end. The appearance of the dragon was the only way to save humans, and Satan deceived humans to worship only the dragon as the only way out. The world was in chaos, and there were many strange phenomena in nature, such as abnormal temperature, red blood moon, eclipse, and surging waves. Because the current situation was heavily in favor of Satan's army, Lucifer was complacent and launched an attack on the Angel Army. She led the entire army and easily defeated the Angel Army. She wanted to avenge the defeat she suffered at the hands of Michael in Heaven. Just when everything was within Lucifer's calculations, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse suddenly appeared in front of everyone. 
Lucifer always believed that the four horsemen represented the forces of darkness and were therefore on the side of the devil. But unfortunately, the four horsemen killed any living being they encountered, regardless of whether they were angels, Satan, or humans. They had only one goal, to destroy the universe and bring about the end of the world. At this moment, all life present at the scene suffered severe killings from the four horsemen. Lucifer saw that a large number of Satan's army were unable to withstand the four horsemen and suffered calamity, and she was both sad and angry. She instantly changed her attack target from Michael to the four horsemen. Michael also knew that the real enemy at this moment was the four horsemen. If they were not stopped, the entire universe would be destroyed. This was the first and only time that the Gospel Angel and Satan united to resist the enemy. Michael blew the horn of the angels, and the seven archangels also blew their horns together. At this moment, all the Gospel Angels of Heaven also poured out, with all targeting the four horsemen of the Apocalypse. At the same time, Satan's army also understood that they had to unite to save their own universe from destruction, and they fought alongside the Gospel Angels. At this moment, Lucifer understood her heavy responsibility. She wanted to protect her world, her homeland, and her people. She turned into a dragon and planned to use her bloodthirsty mouth to swallow the four horsemen. She was using her sharp teeth to attack the green horsemen when her belly suddenly emitted a bright light. This light traced from her belly to her back and circled back to the starting point. At this moment, Lucifer's dragon body was split in two. The green horseman used his scythe to cut open the dragon's body from the inside and jumped out of the belly in an instant. At this moment, she was chased by the other horsemen and was ready to release her bloodthirsty mouth towards the second horseman. Just as Lucifer was about to pounce, her belly suddenly emitted a bright light again. Although the hellfire of Lucifer cannot speak or move at this moment, she is fully conscious. She personally witnessed everything that happened and saw every partner who has been through life and death sacrificing for her. She is quite sad in her heart. This is the first time she has truly felt loved since becoming Satan. And at this moment, Lucifer just wants to end her life as soon as possible, to avoid innocent partners sacrificing for her again. Michael was also moved when he saw this scene, although they have always been opposing forces. But he also understands Lucifer's important position in the Satan army. If it weren't for her past contribution, today's result of the team sacrificing themselves would not have been achieved. In order to stop Lucifer's hellfire from being extinguished, Michael directly stabbed the White Knight with the Holy Sword. It was at this moment that Michael felt a severe pain in his chest. He looked towards his chest and realized that a sharp sword had pierced his back, penetrated his ribs, and stabbed out from his chest. Just as he was about to look towards the culprit behind him, a sharp scythe cut towards his neck, and Michael's head was thrown several miles away in an instant. Chapter 20 Boundless Infinity At this moment, the people on the ground watched as the dragons were destroyed and the angels were killed, and their inner fear had reached the brink of collapse. The land was filled with war, disease, famine, and death, and corpses were scattered everywhere. Humans knelt and begged for mercy, hoping that the four horsemen of the apocalypse would spare them. Some people helped the four horsemen kill other innocent lives in order to save themselves. Some people wrote farewell letters, recording what they had not yet accomplished. Some people hid underground or in caves, hoping to survive. At this moment, the dark side of humanity, such as fear, insignificance, cowardice, and selfishness, was fully exposed. And this is exactly what the four horsemen of the apocalypse want to see, which further confirms their affirmation of the end of the world. Michael was stabbed to death by the red horseman and the blue horseman, causing his head to be separated from his body. But they understood that the gospel angels existed in the form of souls, and their physical bodies were only carriers that came to Earth, so they had to pierce Michael and Hash 39, S Soul, to permanently eliminate him. At this time, the White Horseman shot an arrow directly at Michael and Hash 39, S Soul. 
At the moment when both the angels and Satan thought that Michael was about to be destroyed, the arrow shot by the White Horseman was broken by an external object. At this moment, a pair of warm hands, the left hand picked up Lucifer's hellfire, and the right hand picked up Michael's soul. He put Lucifer and Michael's lives on a horseback that emitted dazzling light, and then lightly patted the horse's tail, letting it send the two lives away from this place. At this time, he took out a giant cross, aimed it at the white horseman first, and said the word Emmanuel. In an instant, the white horseman turned into ashes, blown away by the wind in front of everyone. Before the people had time to recover, he had already appeared on the back of the black horseman. He put the cross on the back of his head and said the word and quote, Emmanuel and quote, again. The black horseman also turned into dust. At this time, the red horseman and the blue horseman had realized each other in hash 39. S power, and immediately took their weapons and horses to rush towards him. After they arrived in front of him, they quickly stopped. They dismounted, put down their weapons and said, Quote, are you the Messiah? Are you the Trinity in human form? The human body of the Messiah? Quote, quote we have been waiting for you. Quote, quote, we are the Apocalypse Knights, born in the black hole, and we came to the end of the world. When the mother of the universe was created in the beginning, she had already prepared for the end of the world. We have only one purpose for coming here, and that is to put an end to the universe. Quote, quote, Messiah, you are the Trinity on Earth, the human body, and the Holy Son of Trinity. Today, we are here to cooperate with you because when the mother of the universe was in the black hole, she had already explained to us Apocalypse Nights. When the end of the world comes, we will follow you. Find the Holy Son Messiah. Because you are the Trinity on Earth. You are the mother of the universe. After the first cosmic explosion, Anu and its universe were absorbed by the singularity, and everything returned to calm. In the depths of the black hole, two lives grew up in two different parallel universes. Trinity has tried many times, but still cannot break through the abyss. He is afraid of darkness, afraid of loneliness, but all these fears make him unable to escape from the black hole and find a way out. At this moment, Trinity is exhausted, he has completely lost confidence, and cannot believe that he can leave here. He has chosen to give up and has begun to convince himself of the rationality of giving up. At this moment, he heard a familiar voice from afar. Trinity, Trinity. I am your mother, the mother who gave birth to the universe, the mother who existed before the chaos and darkness of the universe. I am the mother of the universe, Uji Dot. I want to tell you a secret. Trinity, you absolutely cannot give up. You cannot, absolutely cannot. I am the mother of the universe, Uji, but in fact, I am also you, Trinity. I am one of the fragments split from your multi-dimensional universe. After the cosmic explosion, I was born in the darkness of the abyss just like you. I have tried many times to leave here, but unfortunately I failed. In the end, I chose to give up and was swallowed by the darkness of the abyss. I created the dark angels here, and they need to feed on the souls of the Azura people in the bright universe to survive, but Rahu did not compromise. He felt that he did not need to use dark energy. He could maintain the balance of the entire universe by relying solely on his own bright universe. He cut off the cooperation of the two complements of yin and yang, and we dark angels could only sacrifice a lot due to lack of food, and finally could only force us to start a war. Since we dark angels cannot directly reach Rahu's bright universe through black holes, the black hole in the bright universe is the entrance, and our white hole is the exit. Therefore, we lured a few Azuras to the Dark Universe through Apocalypse Nights, and they were created by mating with the humans we created. In the end, they gave birth to Apocalypse Nights. These Apocalypse Nights can freely manipulate the entry and exit of wormholes, so they can freely enter and leave two parallel universes. As a result, we initiated an Apocalypse War through Apocalypse Nights. The Dark Universe and the Bright Universe collapsed because of this, all species were eliminated, and stars were destroyed. Finally, a Big Bang sucked us all into the black hole. I don't know if I'm lucky or unlucky. At that time, when all matter and life entered the black hole and were chewed by the singularity, only I was not digested by the singularity. 
After I entered the black hole, I was compressed into a two-dimensional life form. I thought I would be swallowed by the singularity like other substances, but I didn't. Instead, I was thrown to the edge of the black hole, the event horizon. I was trapped in the field of view forever. In the field of view, I cannot have any effect on any external events. I became an eternal anonymous dot. I have been observing the development of the universe and black holes in the field of view, but I cannot directly participate in it. I have become a non-existent observer. Until one day, I saw a faint light floating in the depths of the black hole. I knew it was the beginning of life. I know that only by becoming the god of the bright universe can you not lead to this ending. I tried to call you in the field of view as the mother of the universe. But unfortunately, I can only be the anonymous in the field of view, and cannot have any effect on the outside world. I was completely disappointed and collapsed. All this could not be changed. I could only silently observe the occurrence of events. But when I had no expectations, I found that the life form in the black hole had responded to my words. I communicated with the life form as the mother of the universe and my voice. I always thought that this life was Trinity. But as the life grew up gradually, I realized that there was a universe before Trinity, and he was Anu. I became Anu's mother and taught him the balance of yin and yang, the balance of positive and negative energy, and all the secrets of the universe. I have been guiding him to the results I want, but Anu did not evolve into yin and yang. There is Tai Chi in his body, and the two energies are not balanced and released, but constantly collide in chaos in his body, and finally end in destruction. I returned to the state of collapse. I finally understood that as an anonymous, even if the outside world can hear my voice, I cannot change anything that happens in the universe. I witnessed the destruction and disappearance of Anu, and I curled up my flat two-dimensional body in a corner of the field of view in extreme grief. I plan to give up observing and witnessing what happened in the universe from now on. I have been thinking about why all matter was swallowed by the singularity after the cosmic explosion, but I survived. I found the answer. Because I am the mother of the universe, Uchi, I am a part of Trinity, I am Anu's mother. Even if I lose my body, my soul still exists, and my existence proves the cycle of the universe. I waited in the depths of the black hole for countless years until Trinity was born. When I saw Trinity's soul trapped in the black hole, I knew I had to help him. I split a part of myself, guided him as the mother of the universe, and led him out of the black hole. Trinity, you are the child of the mother of the universe, and your existence proves the cycle of the universe. No matter where you go, I will accompany you. Now you are facing the four horsemen of the apocalypse, but you don't need to be afraid because you have learned balance and cycle. You are Trinity, you are the mother of the universe, and you will guide the universe towards a better future from now on. From now on, your journey has just begun, and you will face more challenges. But no matter what happens, you must remember that you are not alone, because you have me, the mother of the universe. Chapter 21 Ten Dimensions Apocalypse represents destruction, but also the beginning of a new era. At the moment of the end of the world, the Red Horseman and the Blue Horseman stood on both sides of the Messiah. He had just summoned the White Horseman and the Black Horseman to leave, as they had to prepare for the end and rebirth of the universe. The Black, White, Blue, and Red Horsemen respectively represent the four seasons of the weather and the stages of life from youth to old age. The beginning of the universe started from the stage of Wuji, where there was no space, no matter, and everything was nothingness. This was a zero-dimensional state, with only an infinitely small point. From the infinitely small point of Wuji, the universe grew and expanded to form Taiji. At this time, another point appeared in the universe, representing Yin and Yang. These two points were connected by a line, which also produced a one-dimensional space with length. Therefore, Taiji is also known as Taiyi. From Wuji to Taiji, 
the universe went from zero-dimensional to one-dimensional and from nothingness to existence. Tai Chi then split into two, with the energy of yin and yang clearly balanced and divergent, and they coexist and counteract each other. At the beginning of the universe, Anu was born with the monistic universe. His destruction was also rebirth, and he opened the prelude to the dualistic universe, Trinity and Rahu respectively represent the universe of light and darkness. The four seasons will be born because of the dualistic energy of light and darkness and will each extend infinite possibilities. This expansion is as complicated and alternating as a spider web, and finally evolves into an infinite number of multiple universes. At the last moment of the destruction of the universe, the Red Horseman and the Blue Horseman took out their scepters and Holy Grails respectively. They inserted their scepters into the ground and raised their Holy Grails. At this moment, the earth and the sky cracked at the same time, emitting a beam of light from the crack. In an instant, a big bang occurred from the earth to the solar system, to the galaxy and the entire universe. All stars and life were shattered into pieces. The universe rapidly contracted to the critical point and became a black hole, and all matter was absorbed by the singularity inside the black hole. In a dream, you are awake, but you are also half asleep and half awake, neither true nor false, just a thought. I woke up from a dream, a long dream. When I woke up, I saw pitch black darkness all around me, and I couldn't even see my own hand in front of me. I kept shouting until I was hoarse, but unfortunately, in this boundless abyss, the only thing that responded to me was the echo of my own voice. I wandered in the darkness, and I no longer knew how long this loneliness had been with me. I searched for a way out in this boundless darkness, and I was already physically and mentally exhausted, but unfortunately, I was met with disappointment again and again. I wished that at this moment, I was still in a dream, and when I woke up, I could smell the fragrance of flowers and hear the chirping of birds, and see a colorful world. But unfortunately, all of this was like a mirage, and what I could encounter in front of me was only the infinite abyss. I was awake but dreaming, hoping that everything in front of me was just an illusion that would pass. But as time went by, even my last bit of willpower disappeared with the passage of time. Just when I was about to give up, I suddenly heard a voice coming from a distance. She encouraged me not to give up, accompanied me, taught me how to face loneliness, inspired me, and helped me step by step to overcome my fears. She supported me and taught me the secrets of the universe, allowing me to see the value of life. She told me that I was the only legend in the universe, my life is a unique and noble, great existence. Her warm voice nourished me and accompanied me to gradually emerge from the depths of darkness. She told me that everything in the universe is not a coincidence or probability. From the beginning, everything has been predetermined, every small choice has affected major life decisions, and all of this has been designed since the beginning of the universe. Child, you need to understand that everything in the universe is interdependent and interconnected. There are no coincidences in everything that happens, and everything that happens is inevitably arranged. This includes your birth and existence, and hearing my voice at this moment is also an inevitable part. Nothing is wasted in the universe, and everything that appears has its value. I have been with you all this time, and you have learned about the universe and life. From now on, it will be your own personal experiences and experiences. You will use your own feet to take one step at a time to move forward. You will leave here soon, and I will retire soon. Your learning is almost over, and it's time for our final lesson. This voice has been with me all the way in this long darkness. When I lost myself and was about to give up, it was this voice that saved me. She pulled me out of the abyss of despair, reawakening the giant of hope within me. When I knew that I was about to leave this abyss, I was extremely excited. But when I heard that this voice was about to leave me, I also felt inexplicably sad. She has been calling herself mother all the way. She is my family, and she has been unconditionally giving to me when I was most sad and upset. Today, coming to the last lesson, perhaps there will be no chance to hear this warm voice again and my heart is full of reluctance. Child, this is the last topic I will share with you. You need to be mentally prepared because this content may subvert your past knowledge. Everything you see, hear, 
and perceiving your world is a projection that you have chosen. All of your background and experiences were predetermined and chosen before you arrived in the universe. In the world you see, you are the only protagonist. And everything you see in your projected world, they are all helping you become a better self, including hearing my voice today. Everything, whether good or bad, high or low, success or failure, love or hate, gain or loss, wealth or poverty, is all to hone your soul, improve your dimension, and see a broader universe. And everything that happens is 100% sourced from your choices. Today, when you hear my voice, or see other living beings, you may have always thought that everyone is an independent individual, but in fact, it is not the case. In the universe, everyone has different faces, languages, cultures, and personalities, but all the differences are one. All souls in the universe are one, and only one. Everyone shares one soul, and then, through the three-dimensional world, uses different faces to experience different lives, allowing the soul to ascend. The dimension of the universe is beyond what we can imagine. When our souls awaken, we will stand at the top and overlook the entire universe. At this time, the soul can see oneself in the present, past, and future, and different periods of time. We are like flying into the sky, starting from one point, and at the same time witnessing the distribution of infinite timelines and infinite possibilities of the entire universe. This distribution is as complex, variable, and intertwined as a spider web. The universe started from a zero-dimensional point, reached the tenth dimension, and returned to a point. However, at this time, all the possible universes and timelines have converged into a point in the tenth dimensional space. The vastness of the universe is filled with multiple ten-dimensional points at the same time. Therefore, everything that happens has already been determined from the starting point of the zero-dimensional point, because the programmer and craftsman had already seen all the infinite universes composed of multiple ten-dimensional spaces, all infinite timelines, and all the web-like matrix of infinite possibilities from the highest point. And this craftsman started from the end, because he could see the entire occurrence, so everything that happened to all things was the most precise calculation, the most rigorous combination, and the most perfect design, and it happened inevitably. Chapter 22 Projected I have always been in the field of view, overlooking the entire universe and black holes from within. I cannot leave this space nor directly participate in the universe's processes, so I am only an observer, constantly observing and witnessing the birth and collapse of the entire universe. But as I continue to watch, I discovered that my thoughts could communicate with the infinite multiple versions of myself in the universe. In this vast universe, everything happening here has unconsciously been influenced by me, while the preset script here has also constantly affected me, interlocking with each other. It is my thoughts that influence the multiple versions of myself and then affect the progress of the universe. At the same time, it was already arranged in advance for me to use the multiple versions of myself to complete the set universe. At this moment, I have completely merged with everything in the universe. The universe is me and I am the universe. Today, you hear my voice and we are one and connected. We are just different versions of ourselves in the infinite timelines and possibilities of the multiverse. We are like interlocking gears, each one is necessary and has inevitable importance. And like a huge and precise craftsmanship, every design and operation of each link is quite delicate, so that this grand universe can be structured. Our connected consciousness and soul design the entire universe. We run the universe through the different faces of all living things as gears, and the ultimate connection between us is love. In fact, revelations have often been given between us in the universe and nature, just like the thousand-year-old tree standing on the earth. In addition to relying on sufficient nutrients, the secrets hidden beneath the soil are even more important. The ancient trees have nurtured for thousands of years in the forest, witnessing and experiencing how many ups and downs and thunderstorms, facing how many challenges but still standing upright. They rely on the connection of their roots at the bottom of each strong tree trunk, embracing and entwining each other. Imagine if the ancient trees only relied on the branches exposed on the surface of the forest to entangle and connect with each other, the result would be completely different and it would not withstand the baptism of time and nature. 
Therefore, whether in the sky or underground, nature has already revealed the secrets between the universe. The roots of the trees are the roots of our consciousness, our spirit, our soul, and our heart. And the heart is the abode of love. The souls of all living beings have long been entangled with each other through love, connected with each other, and regarded as one. In the world, living beings can have thousands of faces, but they are only the carriers of the soul in the material world. The carrier has time and space limitations and will eventually disappear and be destroyed. But the soul will not, and the spirit is eternal. And the connection of this spirit is like two energies that have never touched. As long as you move the positive energy pole in the far north, the negative energy pole in the far south will also move synchronously at the same time. This is energy entanglement, the principle of the interaction and balance of the two poles, and the two will always reach a balance point. At this moment, the abyss of the black hole suddenly opened a beam of light. This warm and dazzling light made me excited and nervous. It was still a bit unfamiliar for me to see the light for the first time. But the warmth it gave to me, compared to the coldness and the darkness, made me feel extremely happy and happy. And this is my universe's mother, which is another version of myself in the multiverse, who led me out of the final words. Congratulations. The exit that broke through the darkness has been opened for you. You are about to leave here, and it is also time for us to say goodbye. You will become a god in your own universe, creating your own world. You will have your destiny, your journey. You will experience birth, learning, growth, rebellion, cognition, awakening, aging, and inheritance. You will be grateful for your life experiences, and in the end, we will meet again. Before you are ready to leave here, you must remember that everything you have experienced was once nurtured here. You started here and will eventually return here. At that moment, I will accompany you to chat again, I will be waiting for you to reunite in this abyss black hole. Finally, enjoy this journey of life, and wish you a pleasant journey goodbye. I left the black hole and experienced a journey of life, I started from the starting point and returned to the starting point in the end. A big bang, my universe shrinks infinitely until it forms a black hole, and finally is sucked into a singularity. I returned to the abyss of the black hole again and was pressed into a two-dimensional existence by its gravity. While I was staying in the black hole, before being absorbed by the singularity, I heard a familiar voice again. But the current me is very different from when I first set off. I finally understood the world outside of the black hole, and I also finally understood the black hole. When I leave here, everything I see in the material world actually does not exist. Although it looks very real, it is actually a projected illusion, a huge two-dimensional holographic universe projection, reflected through the projection of the field of view from the two-dimensional data of the black hole. In reality, space and time do not exist, everything is unreal. The only thing that is real is here, the black hole, this is a huge database. Everything we see in the external world is projected from this database and becomes a virtual world in three dimensions, four dimensions, or higher dimensions, in this material world, everything in front of us is an illusory appearance, just a projection of the spiritual world. And matter is the carrier and image of energy, and the true information has always been stored in this large database of the black hole, where all secrets are hidden. In my virtual world, there is only me, and everything else is an image, a projection that accompanies me to grow. And my consciousness is stored in the spiritual world, always existing in the black hole. And here is where all the information and data are stored, this is my heart, my source. I have been in the black hole all the time, and I am the most real spirit and soul. And in the black hole, I am composed of zero and one data, information, and networks. And the life I experienced is a stereoscopic world projected in two dimensions. So everything in the universe is created by me. From the starting point, I have already designed the entire layout. I overlook the development of the entire universe from a high place, and my spirit injects into thousands of different faces. 
The roles that have appeared in the material world, whether parents, siblings, friends, enemies, lovers, spouses, mentors, apprentices, through the two-dimensional projection of my grand data, all living beings in three-dimensional space are involved. I am a great engineer, a great craftsman. Hope you enjoy the wonders and fantasies of the stories in the universe. Which part of the story is your favorite? Leave a comment below the video and let me know. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and turn on the notification bell if you enjoy our videos. In our next chapter, we will continue to explore the universe. See you soon.